Hi there, welcome to Slant Asymptotes. Here we're gonna take a closer look at how to graph rational functions involving slanted asymptotes. We've seen vertical and horizontal, but what do we mean by slanted? So before we do that, we are gonna do a quick pit stop on a little bit of division. So here we can see I have a function g of x, x squared minus four divided by x. So I want to review how we divide polynomials because really that's what these rationals are doing. They are taking two polynomials and dividing them. You can see that I've already set up synthetic division. So as a quick reminder, yes, we can use synthetic when the divisor or what's in the bottom is all by itself. So basically it's x plus five, x minus 10. I just can't do it with two x, five x, x squared, then I have to do long division. So we use long division because it works every time, but it's also kind of like our backup plan when synthetic just doesn't quite work. So synthetic says I take whatever is in the bottom and I set it equal to zero. So I just have to put a zero here and then I have a one x squared, no x's and a minus four at the end. Synthetic says I always drop the first one, so I'm gonna get a one that's left over and I multiply. So one times zero is zero, and then I add zero plus zero is zero, and I keep repeating that process. Zero times zero is a zero, and then negative four plus zero is negative four. You can see I put this in a different color because this is your remainder. It's anything that was left over. You can put the one if you like, or you can just leave it as X. And then obviously we have plus zero, but you don't have to write that if you don't want to. So feel free to, don't have to. If you would like to see the long division to verify your answer, you can see I have the pyramids because we are slanted today. Here you can see the exact same answer. Negative four doesn't go into X, so I'm done. Or you can even tack on and say plus zero. You can see I've kept g of x the same because now I want to try graphing it. All right, I see x squared minus four. So good thing I've got some difference of squares. So I've got an x plus two and an x minus two. Roots, I find those in the numerator and I set them equal to zero. So you can see I subtracted two and I added two. Asymptotes, I find them in the denominator. I set them equal to zero. So there's my vertical asymptote tangency and togetherness. So this is where I focus on the numerator and the denominator. Are there twins? Well, there are no identical pieces, so I'm having no togetherness and there's no bounces in the graph. End behavior. This is where we explored the degrees. Well, I have an x squared over an x to the first. So this is the high over low. High over low means go, slant. So we have a slant and you'll see I have it at y equals x because guess what you just did? You found the slant asymptote when you did division. That is how you find it. You divide the polynomial. So here I can see I'm left over with an x. Same thing here. So when you do the slant, it is an equation. So you'll just tack on a y. Here is the good news there's a vertical asymptote right there in the graph on the y-axis. So there's no way that I can cross it. So this one will have no y-intercepts. So y is equal to x, so it's that linear parent function. Now we can graph all of our pieces. Well, I see a root and I see my boundaries. So I know I'm gonna have to get close to this vertical asymptote. And then end behavior, so the graph in the ends is going to get really, really close to those slanted asymptotes. And that's your final piece of the graph. So nice slanted asymptote right through those roots. So let's just try identifying asymptotes. We'll push the graphing away to the side. Vertical asymptotes, where do I locate those? Those are always in the denominator. So I always set that denominator equal to zero. So here I just have to add three to both sides and then I can divide by two. So I have a vertical at X equals three over two. Let's take a closer look at the horizontal asymptote. Again, here's kind of the issue. I have an X squared over an X to the 
first. So this one is a high over low. So I do need to find the slanted asymptote. It's not going to be horizontal. So I do need to do a little bit of division here. So I've got 2x going into 4x squared 2x times, and then remember, we multiply back down. So here's a 4x squared, and then you also distribute. So that's minus a 6x. Tricky, tricky. Remember, with long division, that whole piece does get subtracted there. So that will make a difference. Luckily, things will cancel out. So 4x squared minus 4x squared is gone. And now I just have a 10x plus 6x. So here's a 16x. And then we'll drop down that minus 23. And we repeat the process. 2x goes into 16x 8 times. And then we do the same thing. We multiply back down. So I'm going to have a 16x minus 24. Same thing, that whole piece gets subtracted and hopefully you see some things cancel out. So my 16x's go away and I'm left with a positive one. Here's the good news. You never ever need the remainder with slanted asymptotes. You ignore it completely. So this one will have a slanted asymptote at y equals 2x plus 8. So it'll be a line, and that's what causes the slant. So first things first, Brady, we got a factor. So let's look in that numerator. Well, I can already see that they all have an x in common. And the denominator, I just need to multiply to negative 8 and add to 2. And that works out really nicely with positive 4 and negative 2. Well, the denominator is going to stay the same, but that numerator can keep going. So I have a what multiplies to positive 4 and adds to 4, 2 and 2. So don't forget that GCF. It's still hanging on. Roots, we find them in the numerator. So it looks like I have two possibilities. I have one at 0. And then don't forget to go ahead and subtract that 2 to move it to the other side to get your roots at 0, 0, and negative 2, 0. Asymptotes, OK, that's going to be in the denominator. So I have two pieces. Again, I add 2, and I subtract 4. So here I can see I'm going to have three pieces or branches in my graph, one here, one here, and one here. So let's keep going and get more clues to our puzzle. All right, T looking for twins. Do I see any twins? Well, the bottom, those look the same, but oh, I do have twins in the top. So that means I'm going to be tangent or I'm going to bounce at that root right at negative two. So I always kind of like to highlight the point that I'm bouncing at just so I know when I get there, it works out. E for end behavior. All right, let's compare the exponents. Let's compare the degrees. I see a cubed over a squared. So that means I have high over low. So I need to find a slanted asymptote. So that means some long division. So same thing. X squared goes into X cubed. X times and multiply back down. So X cubed is the first one, 2x times x is positive 2x squared. x times negative 8 is minus 8x. Same thing, subtract those pieces. x cubed minus x cubed goes away. 4 minus 2 is 2x squared. 4 plus 8 is 12x, and there's really nothing to drop. Repeat the process. x squared goes into 2x squared, 2 times, and a multiply back down. So my x squareds are going to be going away. I've got 2x minus 16. Here's the good news. Yes, you can see that I'm kind of running out of some space. Here's what I love about this. Once these pieces cancel out, I'm left with an x piece. Well, x squared is never going to go into x. So guess what? 
you done, you found the slant right here in the top. So high overload does mean go, and we have a slanted asymptote at x plus 2. Y intercept. So we're going to plug in. Oh, wait a minute. I'm getting deja vu. We already have it. It's right there at 0, 0. So we already have the Y intercept. So we are good to go. I kind of like to graph this in pieces because again, this just tells you what the ends of the graph do. It doesn't guide you to the middle. So here would be where that slanted asymptote would go. So it starts at two and goes up one over, up one over, up one over. But I'm going to bring it back just to that side because it's just what the end pieces are doing, not the middle. Same thing here. I'm going to start at two and go down one over one, down one. So that's going to stretch this way. And again, I'm going to bring it back just a little bit down one, down one, down one, down one. So there is my slanted asymptote. I'm leaving that middle piece alone. Well, here's the thing. I don't have any roots going on here. So I can't put that branch right here because I'm going to create a root that I don't have. So that first piece is going to get close to here and then get close to that vertical asymptote. Same thing on the other side. I don't have any roots here. So my piece can't go like this, otherwise I'm crossing. So the other one is gonna get close to the vertical and close to the horizontal. This piece is going down, so I'm gonna have to start up here because they're not going together. So I'm gonna come down just like this. <gasps> I'm gonna bounce and go back up. Oh, but I have to go through this root, so I have to come back down. <gasps> And there's your middle piece. Let's check the T's. Well, this piece is going down. This piece is going up. So they're not going together. Final answer in the graph. All done. We're going to create a rational function with these characteristics. So first, let's start with the roots and the vertical asymptote. So I can see I've got roots at negative 2 and positive 3. So basically, x is equal to negative 2 and positive 3. Let's go ahead and also work with the vertical asymptote right there at 1. Well, if I go ahead and move some things back over, because I'm going backwards, I'm going to have an x plus 2, and I'm going to have an x minus 3. You'll also see I left a note to myself because roots go in the numerator. So I like to write where these pieces go to help me process. Same thing on this x. We're going to subtract 1, and vertical asymptotes are found in the denominator, in the bottom of the fraction. So let's go ahead and build this function. So I'm going to have these two pieces in the top and this one in the bottom. Verify the slant asymptote. So before we try to plug some things in and try to predict, let's just see where the slant asymptote is on this function. It's going to be a little tricky to divide. So what I'm going to do is expand and multiply everything out on the numerator. And then I'm going to keep the denominator the same. Ooh, I love this denominator because it's simply x minus 1, which means I can use a synthetic. So I'm going to plug a 1 in for the very top, and I'm going to have a 1x squared minus 1x minus 6. Synthetic says always drop the first one, all right? So it looks like I'm going to have a 1 here, and multiply back. 1 times 1 is 1. Oh, 1 minus 1 zero and keep going. So we got zero times one is zero. Negative six plus zero is negative six. Again, the remainder we do not care about in this one. So I always like to draw an x through it. Well, I divided x squared by an x and got this piece in purple. So that tells me I would have a slant at one x plus zero or just y is equal to x. Let's scroll back. And yes, that's where I want my slant to be. So it works out really nicely. So that says I need to start by plugging in a 0. Well, I plug it in, and I get a y-intercept at 0, 6. Let's see where I needed it to be. Oh, yes, 
nailed it right there at zero and six. So let's go ahead and plot all these points so we can actually see where all this information goes. Well, got to get close to that vertical, got to cross through the y-intercept, got to cross through the root, and the ends get close to the slants. Same thing here, get really, really close to the vertical, and the ends go towards the slant. All done.